On behalf of the Sacred Heart Academy community, I welcome you. Sacred Heart Academy is one of the schools sponsored by the Sisters of St. Joseph, and so we'd like to begin our gathering with a prayer that is the mission of our school and of the Sisters of St. Joseph, and a mission rooted in the Gospel of Jesus. Loving God, creator of all, may we be your carriers of a love that is unifying, reconciling, and excludes no one, whether in our families, our neighborhood, our nation, or our world. Where there are divisions, let us sow unity. Where there is hardness of heart, let us sow compassion. Where what should be together is broken and apart, let us be God's repairers. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. And now Mrs. Graham, our president, will greet you. I want to welcome you, but I also want to congratulate uh, the girls who are with us today. By virtue of just being here, you've already joined a very talented group of young women who are accepted into Sacred Hearts class of 2025. Last night I was listening to a podcast where Melinda Gates was talking with Brene Brown, and she was reflecting on her experiences in an all-girls Catholic high school in Dallas, Texas. And Mrs. Gates was remembering that when she was a student there, she was the captain of the drill team. And that would be something equivalent to like a cheer team. And she was remembering that that was the first time that she knew she was a leader. And she said that that's an experience that she really leans into even today. And Mrs. Gates is about my age, so she's not a recent high school graduate. But she said it was at that time that she learned how to manage people, how to manage a budget, and how to take the lead. And that's what we do here at Sacred Heart Academy. She then remembered her teachers who advocated for computers in classrooms at a time when computers weren't in classrooms for girls. And it was on those computers that she learned how to code and went on to find an inspiring career in a field that she loved. She also remembered her friends, a group of women who she called her tribe, people who stood with her even today as people that she could call upon at any moment to be there for her and support her. And those were people she had met when she was a ninth grader in an all-girls school. And then she remembered the nuns who were there. They were members of the Ursuline Order, but they shared with the Sisters of St. Joseph a commitment to a faith in action and to social justice. And it was through those opportunities that she had the chances to go to courthouses and advocate for women, and through that, again, to be reminded that her faith was an integral part of what she was learning and how she was developing. So here at Sacred Heart today, you'll hear a lot of those same themes, and we're really proud to be able to introduce you to them. Someone asked me earlier, it's a podcast um, that Brene Brown has with Melinda Gates, so if you want to listen to it, it's well worth your time. This year, we were challenged with reimagining how to share Sacred Heart with you. It was a challenge because the best part of Sacred Heart is always in the people and the energy that lives in our hallways every day. And at Sacred Heart, we've been proud to continue that offering this year with the full return to school opportunity for all of our students and a comparable remote opportunity as well. While we saw many of you through Zoom calls and virtual half open houses, and some of you even got in-person tours in small ways, today we want to expand some of those personal touches. So we've designed a theater presentation that will allow you to hear from our principal and assistant principal, who will address some of the unique aspects of Sacred Heart and some of the key academic issues that we think are probably on the minds of many of you. We're also grateful to two current shop parents who are splitting the morning and afternoon sessions who will provide a unique perspective from our parents and hopefully address some of the things that are on the minds of moms and dads. Following that, you'll have a chance to see the school if you've registered for a tour, which will be led by some of our students, as well as the chance to speak with some of our faculty and other key people like our um, assistant principal for student life and our athletics director. And while we do all of this in safe and socially distanced ways, we'll remember that we can do hard things and we can do them together. And I think even in these modified ways, you'll feel the energy and essence of Sacred Heart that is only amplified each day with the arrival of 870 vibrant and talented young women leaders, and we look forward to counting you among them. 
And I'm going to welcome back Sister Gina Moore, who will speak to you a little bit more about mission and academics. Class of 2025, congratulations. Your presence here today says so much about you. You've completed middle grades successfully, you've done well on the tax test, and you have shown in this pandemic year such motivation, resilience, and positive energy. Despite living with social isolation and many disappointments and canceled events, but you did it. As young women, you were well on the way to not letting hardships stop your growth. You should have confidence that you are ready for the next level of your education. You're ready for Sacred Heart Academy. So you're here to find out why you should come to Sacred Heart, and I'll give you three reasons. Probably there is no stronger academic program on Long Island. You graduate not only with a Regents Diploma, but with an advanced and distinguished Regents Diploma. You take AP courses and college courses You'll earn a Bloomberg Lab business certificate. You'll have options for the STEM program, electives, research courses, internships in all areas, for example, Northwell Healthcare, Brookhaven Labs, Malloy College Boot Camp, Morgan Stanley, NISA in Music, the American Psychological Association, and the list goes on. You probably have heard that you have to work very hard at Sacred Heart. But if you got an acceptance letter from us, that means you can do it. You can do it also because the teachers at Sacred Heart don't teach a subject. They teach you a subject. And while technology will be part of teaching and learning, you won't be at a device from eight to three. We want you to have fun and love learning. This happens in the interaction with your Shaw sisters and with teachers who are strong, spiritual, caring, and professional women and men. In and out of the classrooms, our teachers help our young women sort out very complicated issues of our times. The second reason to come to Sacred Heart is that it is a single gender school. Research and our own experience show that teenagers in single gender female schools have a greater confidence and self-esteem. They're more comfortable giving voice to their options, their opinions. They stay focused on academics. They have healthier peer relationships and pursue more leadership opportunities. This is so important because social, emotional, and academic growth are intertwined. In addition to classroom learning, we want students to follow their passions and interests and take on leadership roles. They do this in clubs, athletics, performing arts, and in community service. Some are co-curricular, like women in engineering, women in the health fields, coding club, speech and debate, fashion and design. Many are service clubs, mission club, campus ministry, midnight run, march for life, helping hands. And some are so much fun. Red and Gold, Nutcracker, Concerts and Musicals. Lastly, you want to come to Sacred Heart because it is a Catholic faith-filled community with a very relevant mission. How rewarding it is to live the mission of bringing unity, reconciliation, and God's inclusive love wherever you are and to whomever you meet without distinction. The Sisters of St. Joseph began in 1650 when a small group of women walked the streets of a destitute city in France where they taught women lace making so these women could learn a trade, earn a wage, and live with a sense of dignity, respect, and independence. The congregation spread throughout Europe and the United States doing many ministries, but especially the education of women and children. When they came to the United States, it was said of them, they empower women to do all they are capable of doing. History tells us that in each generation, we see how much more women are capable of becoming and doing. Class of 2025, come to Shaw, and we will show you and your generation 
how much more you can do and become. And now Mrs. Crystal will talk with you. My name is Gina Crystal, and I work here at Sacred Heart Academy, or Shaw, as many people refer to us as. I'm the assistant principal for academics. My prior roles in life have been a college admissions counselor, a middle school counselor, a high school counselor, and the director of guidance. I worked many years to help students achieve their dreams by supporting them to succeed in school and helping them to choose the college that is just the right fit for them. My current job as an assistant principal for academics is to make sure that young women like yourselves who are accepted to Shaw and decide to come to Shaw become prepared to handle the rigors of high school and eventually the rigors of college. After all, Shaw is a college preparatory school, and out of approximately 200 yearly graduates, 99% of them attend four-year colleges or universities. And consistently, over 95% receive academic, athletic, or artistic scholarships, totaling over $55 million per year. What better way to accomplish this than to expose you all to college level classes while in high school with the support of your families, your teachers, and your school counselors. You will have an opportunity to take several college level classes and earn college credits while in high school. And also take AP courses, which stands for Advanced Placement courses, in 17 different areas from music to science to English, math, history, computer science, and art. We have amazing music and art departments here at Shaw with lots of possibilities to develop your talents. All classes at Shaw are college preparatory in nature and will teach you how to write, to think critically, to research, to learn another language, to code, to draw, to play music, to sing, to dance, to speak in public, to learn about financial literacy, through Bloomberg certification, to write a college essay, and even how to interview. You will accomplish these things because every course, whether it's an honors course, or an AP course, or a Regents level course, will challenge you to do your best. By offering flexibility in our scheduling model, you are not tracked into a level, but are given opportunities to excel in areas that you are strong and passionate about. You all come from different public and parochial and private schools with all different educational backgrounds. What we have found successful is to use a standardized test like the tax that shows us your reading, writing, and math abilities for initial placement that we predict will give you the best chances for success as you transition to high school. Once there is success in your ninth grade year, by earning a 92% or higher, that's not so bad, right? You could do that, all of you. Students can decide to challenge themselves in an honors class. To be college ready, we have a goal, and that goal is for all girls to take at least one AP, advanced placement, or college level course before they graduate high school. Many of you, may also have that opportunity as early as next year at Shaw. This year, for the first time, we are offering to those students who are currently enrolled in high school credit-bearing living environment class during that eighth grade year, and if you are achieving well in that class, you will be able to move on to a course called AP Environmental Science. Those students who are currently enrolled in an Earth Science class you'll be registered for a living environment course, and you will also have the opportunity in the future to take AP Environmental Science, among other AP Science classes. 97 to 98% of our students earn a New York State Advanced Regents Diploma, many of them with honors and distinctions. In addition, just recently, we've also added the AP Capstone Program, with potential for our girls to earn an AP Capstone Diploma. Students who choose to take Intro to Research 9 have the opportunity to earn that AP Capstone Diploma. 
This obviously starts with an interest in research. If you have any questions about your placement, you'll be able to speak to me or other members of the guidance department in the gym after this talk. We know that some students have gifts and talents in different subjects. We will capitalize on these strengths and those classes that may be more difficult for you. We will offer you extra help in every subject during the week. Our teachers are very willing to help. You will also receive assistance with your own guidance counselor. Our developmental guidance curriculum helps to keep you on track with college and career advisement throughout all four years of your high school experience. For your information, you will all be issued a school Chromebook to use during your four years here. But I have to tell you, just like Sister Jean, you will not be on that constant screen during the day. Not from eight to three. You will use it, but also our teachers really firmly believe in the written word. We know that Shaw girls have many interests and talents. We want you to flourish here, become involved, make friends, and above all, be happy. If you're interested in clubs or sports, ask questions of our assistant principal for student life and our athletic director who will be in the gym right after this program. Those of you who decide to join us as a Shaw girl today or next Tuesday, you will be invited to a Zoom meeting to attend in the next few weeks so that we can walk you through how to sign up for classes. Do you want art or music, gym or dance, or what world language would you like to take? You will be guided every step of the way to reach the right decision for you. I'm very happy that you chose to come here to Sacred Heart. I vouch for this school, not only because I work here and walk the halls here every day, but also because I'm the parent of a junior, class of 2022, who is very, very, very happy that she came to Sacred Heart. Speaking of parents, I have the privilege of now introducing you to our next speaker, who is not only a mother of Caroline, a 12th grader, and Elizabeth, a current 9th grader, but also an alumni herself, Mrs. Mary Beth Carthy Darcy, class of 1990. Please help me welcome her to the podium. My name is Mary Beth McCarthy Darcy, and I am a 1990 Shaw graduate and the proud mom of two girls currently here, Caroline a senior and Elizabeth a freshman. This place is like home for us, and although, although the campus has changed drastically since I was here, it still has that warm, welcoming feeling every time I arrive. This year has been a challenge for all of us, but the one bright light in our home has been Shaw. The girls have never been so happy to go to school, and getting up in the morning is never an issue. The faculty has done an amazing job, and I've actually enjoyed listening to some of the classes this week during virtual at my kitchen island. I can hear how much the faculty cares for these girls, and trying to keep them engaged on a daily basis. Even Miss White is telling the girls not to online shop during music class. <laughs> Shaw offers something for each student. I have two girls who will have very different experiences here at Shaw, but both are able to excel and develop their strengths on a daily basis. My shy daughter is student council president, goal team captain, a Eucharistic minister, and member of the varsity swimming and lax teams. The confidence she has gained over the last four years is incredible. Although this one is not my honor student, I must admit she buckled down after her sophomore year and is now receiving acceptances to many excellent nursing programs. She realized that being smart is cool and working hard is something they just do here. And it's all thanks to the teachers who motivated her and the course offerings at Shaw. My honor student is still finding her way but as I watch how engaged she is in her classes and the determination to do well, I know the next few years will be outstanding. I can't wait to see her on the Four Sisters field playing lax, but also the numerous clubs that she will become a part of as the years go by. There is something for every student here, and Shaw, through these difficult times, has still held after school activities and clubs as best they can. Throughout my life, Shaw, the Shaw Sisterhood is with me on a daily basis. After graduating college, I received a master's in education and worked in both Catholic and public schools. After a few years of staying at home, I decided it was time to go back to the workforce. I relied on the tools that Shaw gave me 
to take a chance and pivot to a new direction and a career in real estate. It was there I was reminded the Shaw sisterhood runs deep. My manager, colleagues, and so many customers include Shaw alum. It's a connection. Our alums are making tremendous impact at virtually every level in the fields of education, finance, medicine, law, you name it. Our alums are doers, achievers, collaborators, connectors, and it all came from the years they spent at 47 Cathedral Avenue. My closest friends today are the ones I walk the halls with, shared the tennis court with, and shared many laughs and even some tears. I'm proud of the friendships I have made and the ones my daughters are making during these times. There is nothing better than when a few of the girls come over and laugh about really funny things that happen at school. And it's the same things that happened when I was here too. We share this, those experiences. Your daughters will be surrounded by people who motivate, inspire, and push them to be the best they can be every day. Everyone, good morning. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. And I feel very privileged to speak to all of you today. So I need to start by saying that private school was never on my radar, like ever, ever, ever. <laughs> and um, my daughter attended in ninth grade our local high school, and she kept insisting uh, throughout her ninth grade year that she wanted to come to Sacred Heart, very specifically Sacred Heart. And I just assumed it was because she had one good friend who attended here and was having a great experience. And what I didn't realize is that my daughter's insistence on wanting to come to Sacred Heart was a silent cry for help. I did not realize that she was struggling tremendously in her current high school environment. She had been in the same school with the same kids since she was five years old, and little did I realize that she had no friends at this point. It was a very big struggle that I wasn't even aware of and that she hid very well. And um, at the time, uh, I was a widow with three kids, and I could not afford to send my daughter to private school. It was just not even an option. But then on one day in March, um, I saw my daughter's breaking point and it really broke me. And I realized that something needed to shift. So that's where our journey at Sacred Heart started. Uh, Natalia started here at Sacred Heart in 10th grade. And her experience has been, I, I could stand here and give you a list of 100 things. So I just really wanted to give you some bullet points on what are the things that I see as a parent. Her self-esteem has improved, her confidence has improved, her faith has improved. She's excited to go to school and she has made many, many friends. Friends that treat her actually like family. Um, academically, she's thriving and she has joined team sports, soccer, which she absolutely loves. Um, red and gold, she made the dance team and she was just, she stressed how like incredible this is and it was. Um, it was just something that I never realized on a high school level, seeing such a performance, I truly felt I was watching prof professionals perform. It was extraordinary. And um, I should share, she started Sacred Heart September of, um, the, of her sophomore year. And four months later, she had her Sweet 16 party. And as I stressed, she went from a high school where she felt she had no friends to 60% of her birthday party being her Sacred Heart family, and I just thought that was extraordinary, and it was beautiful. Uh, other things she's uh, joined, Driver's Ed, which is a really big deal, and Driver's Ed had to pivot from in-person to virtual, and it was incredible. Like, I could not believe it. At first, I was skeptical. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, how do you take Driver's Ed virtually? <laughs> but it worked. It worked, and she got her license uh, very first shot. She passed her road test. She is not only uh, a really decent driver, a really good driver, but very responsible, and I could see how much she benefited from driver's ed, and as she likes to stress, she's 16 years old, and none of her friends, other than her one friend at Sacred Heart, who also has an early birthday, um, has her license, and at 17, she also likes to brag a little bit about that she will be one of the few to have her regular license because of her driver's ed experience here at Sacred Heart. So that is a big deal for her, and I'm a nervous wreck about that. <laughs> but I feel confident that um, she'll be fine. Uh, I have to say, the COVID transition, I have also, now I'm newly married, I should say, and I have a stepdaughter and a daughter that both attend public uh, high school. And so I can make this comparison, and I have to say that the pivot that Sacred Heart did was seamless with COVID. And I did not see that same transition in my other two daughters' high school. 
So that was really um, incredible to see. Uh, these are my daughter's words. These are her top reasons for loving this school so much. Number one, no pressure to wear makeup. And that's, you know, it's a big deal. I, I, I think that typically young girls, you know, like to wear makeup, but for her particularly, and I have um, heard this from other young girls, that it's a lot of pressure to have to put on your game face, right? It's like the mask that you wear to look a certain way and to represent and to, to, to really have to get up even earlier to, um, you know, look a certain way where you feel like you have to fit in. Her second reason, no boys. And that's huge. A lot of the issues that she dealt with in high school had to do with boys. And I didn't know that until she reached her breaking point. So there was a lot of pressure between that. So that's one of her, her, her really, really top reasons. But her top, top, top reason is uniforms. And that's because the fact that she doesn't have to stress over what she's going to wear every morning. You know, it's, it's a very competitive world out there in general. And it's competitive amongst these kids and where us parents are not, you know, privy to it all the time. And it's very competitive on what brand you're wearing, what, you know, how you show up. You know, are you wearing the same shoes two days in a row? It's, it's really a lot of stress on our kids. And I feel that her wearing a uniform not only improved her self-esteem, but it also helped her mental and health overall because she sleeps more. The fact that she doesn't have to get up early to do her makeup and to think about what she's going to wear is something I never thought about that had, has added value to her own life. So as for me, um, I went from seeing a daughter who um, didn't want to go to school to one who truly gets to see what girl empowerment and leadership look like. She loves coming to school. And I see a community of girls that not only take pride in themselves, but in each other. And of course, every, every school has things that you know, teenagers go through, but I truly believe that like, because of the faculty and the staff and the support that's here, the blow is lessened for these girls at such a critical age. And I should, as I mentioned, I have two other daughters um, who attend public school, and they're doing uh, pretty well in that setting. But what I realized is that one size does not fit all. For Natalia's journey, it was very different. And what I can say is, from parent to parent, you know the needs of your child. You know them best. You know their dreams and their capacity to thrive in any given environment. I went from a mom who could not afford to send her daughter to private school to a mom who realized that I could not afford not to send her here and make the investment in her and in our family overall. Because of Sacred's hard commitment to this holistic education um, that my daughter is receiving, I feel like I have a daughter who is truly enjoying her teenage years with joy and intention. And I want to stress on the word joy because what is it for our children to thrive academically when socially and emotionally they're broken? So to me, that is the greatest benefit of her being here at Sacred Heart. So I just want to close in saying that sending my daughter here to Shaw has been one of the most incredible and one of the best decisions I have ever made in my life. So thank you very much. Thank you. And now for the Shaw experience. Sacred Heart Academy is definitely a place where everyone feels welcome. It's second home for a lot of the girls here. Going in, everyone was so nice and everybody just wants you to feel so welcome. Young women are able to empower each other. Where We try to empower the students to use their voice and not only just to recognize them, but to really donate them to the world. One of the phrases that we use at Sacred Heart all the time is we want women to lead with heart, lead with compassion, lead with conviction, lead with commitment. During these very formative years of 14 to 18, leadership becomes normalized when they are in an all-girl environment. And I think that's empowering not only for the student who holds that role, but for all of the people who witness her in that role. This is my third year in Beach and Debate, and I am a captain, and this will be my third time going to nationals. Honestly, I don't think I would have ever had this opportunity at another school. And I'm just so thankful. We have loads of opportunities at Sacred Heart in clubs and activities. Sacred Heart Academy's athletics program is distinguished by 13 varsity programs and 23 teams. I definitely think that Sacred Heart 
excels in its athletic program. It's definitely one of the top schools on Long Island for all sports. So one of the things we're really proud of is our Bloomberg Finance Lab. So Sacred Heart is one of very few all-girls schools to have a Bloomberg Finance Lab. And that allows our students to learn in real time some of the financial market materials that people are learning on Wall Street and in big businesses across the country. Sacred Heart Academy is a Google school, and by that, the teachers and the students use Google Classroom and the supported apps. The teachers put assignments or what the test is going to be on, which I think is really helpful because it's easy just to go online and have your books. We are often asked about the technology and how it's used, and at Sacred Heart we have a really strong commitment to technology, but we also have a really stronger commitment to human interaction and relationships. When the initial COVID outbreak had started, we were able to seamlessly transition from traditional education to digital education in one day, and our students did not miss a beat with their education. The service opportunities at Sacred Heart in response to learning about the Gospel of Jesus calls us to really better the world. Um, so whether it's through opportunities in our community, opportunities at our school, more in a global sense, we're really recognizing that we're not just a member of a school in Long Island, but recognizing our member as part of the larger human family. When we look at our 70 years at Sacred Heart, what we see is each decade enabled us to live the mission uniquely. And we saw that in the 1960s, we had sisters involved in the March to Selma, Martin Luther King. Last year and this year, we had students go to the Climate March. We have students at Midnight Run. We have students working for She's the First. All of these organizations are related to bringing love, unity, and reconciliation to our world. The teachers really make it easy for you to contact them if you have any troubles with homework or tests or whether it be doing an outline. They really try to help you get everything done that you need. I think what makes Sacred Heart Academy unique is its ability to determine how to provide students with a personalized pathway for success that allows them to find their dreams and their passions and follow a road that will eventually take them beyond college to a career. Sacred Heart has really helped me prepare for the real world. They're giving me a lot of opportunities to meet with professionals and to think about more what I would like to study in college and beyond. So Sacred Heart has over 11,000 alumni living and working all across the country and the world. They return frequently to share their experiences with our students. And we really believe that you have to see it in order to be it. Currently I'm a junior at Fordham University studying international political economy with majors in art history and economics. Whenever my friends at college talk about our high school experiences, they always ask about all girls education, like how was that? And I always say best four years of my life because I was so confident and so comfortable and it changed who I was as a person. I absolutely love Sacred Heart. I think it was the best decision I ever made. Um, I'm super happy with my time there, the friends I made, the teachers I was able to interact with. I think I developed such a strong confidence from going to Sacred Heart, being in that all-girls environment. But what I feel distinguishes Sacred Heart Academy from other institutions really is the CSJ mission. It, it is everything that moves us, the belief of inclusive love, of tolerance, of the working toward peace and justice. That goes across all curriculums, definitely. It's truly a place that when you come into, you're really accepted and it's really easy to find friends because everyone's really open to being friends with each other and you truly form a really special bond with every single girl here. I think someone should come to Sacred Heart because there are really any opportunities here. I think you really are exposed. I think it's really opening you to different experiences that you didn't think you would get before. And I think it's also a really family aspect. We really have a heart here and everyone cares about each other. And there's definitely a loving aspect. Welcome to Sacred Heart Academy. Come inside and see where leaders are made.